Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back here to today's edition of Intuitive Angling and really appreciate you guys coming by the channel to check the video out. And guys, today I'm gonna do some commentary, sort of give you my opinion on the uh, Bassmaster Elite Series, a live scopers benefit tournament on the St. Lawrence River that just wound up yesterday. Guys, there was there was so much crap that went on at that tournament out there. I don't know if you guys are aware of it. I just sort of want, sort of wanted to give you guys an update because um, it's not a good look for the sport, man. We're going to talk about that in today's video, and I definitely want to hear you guys' opinion on it as well. Um, also, guys, before we get started, I just wanted to give a big thank you out there. Um, you guys hear me talking about this all the time, but everybody out there that has been continuing to support Intuitive Angling by subscribing to the channel and using all our uh, links we put in the description of each video. You guys are the reason the channel's on, so thank you very much for me and my family. If you guys are one of those, really appreciate that. Okay, guys, I'll sort of try to remember everything that went on here because I've been getting messages and people sending me, you know, videos and this and that about this tournament, about all the crap that went down up there. But first of all, it's just like, it's a hodgepodge of DQs, polygraph exams, fights, live scoping, breaking down, umbilical cords, everything with that. So if you haven't heard, you know, we had, there was a, you know, JT Tompkins got disqualified for breaking two rules in the tournament. And then also, um, yes, the last day of the tournament, I guess Trey McKinney and uh, Tyler Williams, both rookies, they got polygraphed. And um, I'm not sure Bass hasn't announced anything on that. But I do know one thing about, you know, when if they give you a polygraph, uh, for, you know, it's it's you in, with the exception of a random polygraph that they did on MLF. Um, you don't just get polygraphed for no reason at all. There has to be a credible accusation that you've broken a rule. So I'm really waiting to hear something from Bassmaster why uh, Trey McKinney and Tyler Williams got polygraphed along with JT uh, Tompkins, who got disqualified. Um, Guy, I don't know. What is the deal with this? I don't think, I can't re hardly remember a Bassmaster Elite Series tournament this year in 2024 where there wasn't a DQ, some type of fine from, you know, guys breaking rules, a disqualification, a penalty, mainly from the rookie class out there. It's like, it's not that hard, man. All you have to do is read the rules and follow the rules. You don't have, if there's any doubt, if here's a simple way to avoid getting DQ'd or penalized or fined. If there's any doubt, something that you do, if you have an idea, you want to try something or do something, call up the tournament director and run it by him before you do that. That's what I did my whole career. If I had something that I thought maybe skirting the edge, I'd always call the tournament director. And sometimes they'd say, no, Randy, you can't do that. Sometimes they'd say, yeah, that's okay. That's the way you get around that. But for whatever reason, like I said in other videos, a lot of these rookies out there are better, the, better at reading the a cheater box and they are reading the rules at Bassmaster. So I'd be curious to get your guys' opinion on that and, and hear back from Bass on what happened with this deal. Now, the second thing with that is, um, you know, the all the fights are going. You guys probably heard the big argument and fight between the Johnson brothers and that rookie named Robert Gee over, you know, a spot there on Lake Ontario. You know, a couple different comments about this on there. It's like, this is nothing new. It's like the, the arguing over fishing spots have been around ever since I started fishing tournaments. But most of the time, back in my day, you, you didn't air this out publicly. If you had a problem with somebody, you went up to him and say, hey, let's go out and we can talk about this out back and get it straightened out if you want to. You don't go air all this stuff publicly that does not look good on the tournament organization. And it's not that hard. Here's the thing about spots. If somebody has a, a argument about a spot, there's only a couple different things that happen on this. Number one, it was it could be some type of a misunderstanding. It's like some people can find the same spot and one person may have been there at a certain time of the day and another person may have been there at a different time of day and they both had a, they both found that spot on their own, but it just simply took whatever for whatever reason they were there at different times of the day and they didn't know the other person was fishing it. That's that's a misunderstanding that can be worked out. The other type of a deal on that is like if somebody goes by and sees somebody fish in a spot and then goes on and fishes the bent rod pattern. They go there at a time that nobody, you know, they when they see somebody out there that's doing good in a tournament, they show up there when that person isn't there, if they get a different flight draw, and that is just weak if somebody does that. But the way that you handle that, it's like you have to communicate. If somebody has got a problem with somebody fishing this and that spot, you don't sit and whine and complain about it. 
<clears throat> you go up to that person and you say, what's, what's the deal here, man? It's like, we need to talk about this. We need to figure out what we're going to do with it. And you work it out man to man. That's the way it always works. And finally, you know, just to, to, to put an icing on top of this, you know, 2024 20, year of just nothing but the cheater box dominating. Guys, I don't think for one thing, I don't know if there was a bass caught at the St. Lawrence River that was not taking spotlighting last week. And if somebody did catch a bass that wasn't spotlighting for that bass, they're probably down in like 90th place or something. But anyway, I mean, somebody sent me a clip. I didn't watch the Bassmaster live, but somebody sent me a clip of Corey Johnson, the tournament leader, was out there and talking about his live scope broke down. And he acted like it was the end of the world because his live scope, the umbilical cord broke down. And even Mark Zona made a comment. It's like, well, he may actually have to go real bass fishing right now or something like that. But when you get to the point, and we've seen this all year long, that people are so connected to that umbilical cord, a forward-facing sonar, that it's like they lose all confidence when they just have to go real bass fishing. So, I don't know, guys. This this whole St. Lawrence River tournament it just left a bad taste in my mouth because it just sort of exemplified what we've seen all year long. Lots of rule breaking, lots of rule violations, you know, the cheater box completely dominating and continuing to destroy the sport. People arguing over, you know, spots here and there. It's like, what's what the heck's happened to our sport? I mean, we didn't have this type of stuff. Back when I was fishing Bassmaster and back when Ray Scott was running it and Harold Sharp and Dewey Kendricks, we didn't have any of this crap going on. We, you know, it was like, you know, you went out there and fished and you did your job, you kept your nose clean. It wasn't any problem at all. So, I don't know, guys. I they just something needs to be done over there. Something that some that organization's got to clean up their act because it's not reflecting good on the sport. And if you're one of the people like me out there that love the sport of bass fishing and love Bassmaster back when it was at the top of their game and it was run by Ray Scott and Harold Sharp and all the the forerunners in the sport, you know, I I just don't like what I'm seeing right now. So. Anyway, that's just a few thoughts on there. I like I said, it's uh, it's I just shake my head at it all the time. I and I get all the frustrations, guys. All, all the people out there that share what I'm sharing with you guys right here, there are thousands and thousands of people out there because I get my message inbox is full of stuff like that. It's full of pictures. It's full of videos about you know shady stuff and this and that and stuff that shouldn't be going on or whatever. And um, I just I hate to see that. So. Anyway, guys, season's over. We're all waiting anxiously to see what both MLF and Bassmaster are going to do as far as the turn with uh, the whole, you know, spotlighting next year. I think there's going to be some changes, and we'll keep you updated as that goes along. But anyway, shoot me your opinion. Let, let me know what you guys think. If you guys, you know, could actually sit and endure watching the back of people's heads bouncing around in three foot waves, looking at a live scope screen for the whole day, let me know what you guys think about that. So, talk later. See y'all.